Welcome, welcome, one and all, in here, out there, all the ships at sea. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Today... <laughs> Love it. Today was the fourth day of the escalating conflict between Israel and Hamas, and the news is both heartbreaking and horrific, but if you read any of that news on Twitter, you might want to check someplace else, because thanks to Elon Musk getting uh, rid of Twitter's verification system, misinformation about Israel and Hamas has been spreading on Twitter, including false claims that Benjamin Netanyahu was hospitalized, video game footage passed off as footage of a Hamas attack, and faked pictures of soccer star Cristiano Ronaldo holding the Palestinian flag. <laughs> Not to question their fact-checking, but I'm pretty sure every picture of Cristiano Ronaldo <laughs> is fake. No one has those abs. <laughs> How do the legs attach? Do they snap onto his torso? <laughs> What's this line about? What is this line? <laughs> That's a, I don't have those. I've looked. <laughs> Here at home, we still have no Speaker of the House, and Republicans don't really seem any closer to finding one in order to reach some consensus. Last night, roughly 150 GOP lawmakers met behind closed doors in what a member called a therapy session. <laughs> oh, I would hate to be a therapist for the House Republicans. <laughs> um, okay, normally I don't say this to a patient, but you are all responsible for your parents' divorce. <laughs> okay, all of you. It's the way you were as a child wow. is why they weren't happy. Wow. <laughs> they did not settle on a speaker, but so far there are two declared candidates, Ohio representative and... <laughs> and gentle orangutan returning the reading glasses you dropped into his enclosure. <laughs> Jim Jordan versus Louisiana representative and waterlogged Billy Joel, Steve Scalise. <laughs> but now, but now they may have some competition for Kevin McCarthy's old job, and it's Kevin McCarthy. Because even though he claims he doesn't want his job back, Kevin McCarthy keeps acting like the House Speaker. When asked why he's just hanging around, McCarthy gave this response. I got nowhere else to go! <laughs> sad. I felt that. That's so sad. I felt that. That's so sad. <laughs> Speaking of new leaders, yesterday there was a big announcement from vaccine conspiracy theorist Robert F. Kennedy Jr. seen here staring at the man he suspects of stealing his glasses. <laughs> uh... Bobby Jr. announced that he is ditching the Democratic primary to run for president as an independent in 2024. Yeah, I mean, you know, who's not so into this independent bid from Bobby Kennedy? The Kennedys, because <laughs> four of RFK Jr.'s siblings released this statement. The decision of our brother Bobby to run as a third-party candidate against Joe Biden is dangerous to our country. Bobby might share the same name as our father, but he does not share the same values, vision, or judgment. We denounce his candidacy and believe it to be perilous for our country. Adding, P.S., skip Thanksgiving this year, the turkey is vaccinated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So RFK Jr. has upended the two-party system while simultaneously alienating his family. All he had to do yesterday with his announcement was to make the most powerful speech of his life. I need my speech. Uh, you, can... you can't read anything. What? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's upside down. Ready on day one. Just as stirring as when Abraham Lincoln announced his candidacy with his head stuck in a bucket of sorghum. <laughs> of course, it could be worse. He could be Donald Trump. The former president was campaigning and... You gotta be quicker with those if we're gonna do those. <laughs> he was campaigning in New Hampshire yesterday and he kicked off his speech by taking shots at his likely opponent in 2024, as well as someone else. It's never been worse than it is now under Crooked Joe Biden, and frankly, his boss, Barack Hussein Obama. I think it's his boss. 
Barack Hussein Obama. Crooked Joe Biden and his boss, Barack Hussein Obama. Really? You're pushing the Hussein Obama in 2023? That's a 2007 dog whistle, man. <laughs> Barack Hussein Obama is totes not my bae. He's the opposite of lit. Now drop the beat. I don't know how to close an umbrella. Ella, Ella, <laughs> Ella. <laughs> what else happened in 2007? What else? The Obama talk wasn't done there. I also opened up 5,000 square miles of ocean off New England that Barack Hussein Obama had closed. I don't know why. I mean, they closed. The most fertile area, almost like in the world, for a thing called fish. <laughs> it's a thing called fish. <laughs> and fish live in a thing called ocean and does a thing called swim, unless... <laughs> Unless fish hit beach, because fish has no what they call leg. No leg for walk, it's sad, which is why we must protect fish natural habitat. Tartar sauce. <laughs> Phileo, we must... Phileo. Trump was playing all the hits on memory lane. He even dusted off his favorite poem, The Snake which was a staple of his 2016 campaign. And we can't play you the whole clip, because this is only an hour show. But here's a taste. Has anybody ever heard the snake? Nobody's in a hurry, right? She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed him and held him tight. But instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in. Oh, tender woman, cried the vicious snake. I cry. Oh, this is so sad to hear. Look, she's crying in the front. <laughs> Don't cry. Learn from this. Oh, she's learning from this, all right. <laughs> Specifically, she's learning how big of a mistake it was to attend this speech. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm being told we have, we have a shot of the woman he was talking to. Please let me leave. I can't take another poem. <laughs> bite me, snake. Just end it. Just bite me. I'm a tender woman. <laughs> Trump <laughs> also complained about his legal troubles. I got arrested. Can you believe it? That's the mugshot. I never thought I'd be taken. I wonder what my father and mother are saying as they look down. We should have loved him more. <laughs> oh. Oh, we should have hugged him just once. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God, for the evil we have unleashed upon this world. At least he's now safely in custody down in Georgia. What? <laughs> they released him, you madman! Give me that snake. God! <laughs> Trump was also mad at a magazine because last week Trump was kicked off the Forbes 400 list of richest Americans. And, and, yeah, yeah, he famously hates when people question his wealth. So he immediately raged truthed the very badly failing <laughs> Forbes magazine, which lost most of its relevance long ago, and which knows less about me than Stormy Daniels, who doesn't know me at all. <laughs> That's, that is a hard left turn. <laughs> How did he get to Stormy Daniels? Oh, that's right, I forgot. The, the night that they had sex, she spanked him with a Forbes magazine. <laughs> So that's the truth. That's true. That is a true story. So now, of course, whenever he sees Forbes, he thinks Stormy. Same way she thinks about him whenever she sees a mushroom. Oh! Oh! So, no, no. Trump's New York fraud trial is still going on, and reportedly his defense team has a bold new strategy: lose big because they know there's no chance of actually winning on the merits, so Trump and his lawyers are hoping to score some PR points, enrage the judge, trash some of the witnesses, and turn the process into a media circus. One Trump ally describes it as the fire festival strategies. <laughs> Always a good sign to name your thing after famous disasters. It's like the popular energy drink, Hindenburg Frost Razzleberry, <laughs> oh, the blue manatee. 
In, uh, in censorship news, we've learned that a library has flagged a book as potentially explicit due to the author's last name. The book in question is Read Me a Story, Stella, by Mary Louise Gay. So they wanted to ban a book because the author's last name is Gay. Seems crazy, but it's the kind of thing that could happen anywhere in Alabama. <laughs> now, the library is facing pushback, and the executive director has said it was a keyword filtering mistake and that Gay's book shouldn't have been placed on the list. See? It was just accidental discrimination that got in the way of their on-purpose discrimination. <laughs> So authors, if you want your books in Alabama libraries, make sure to adopt a very hetero pen name. Look out for One Fish, Two Fish, The Fish Are Male and Female and They're Married by Dr. Strady McMahon Penis. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Kerry Washington, Congressman Maxwell Frost, 